Hello everyone, welcome back. Moving on towards the next part in the series of diseases of dental pulp. So the topic is irreversible pulpitis. Now in the last part of this series, we have seen about the reversible pulpitis. Pulpitis as the name says, it is nothing but the inflammation of the pulp. Now in the last part, we have seen it was reversible pulpitis. So basically it's like, for example, if the person is having early occlusal caries, so that is early. So in that case, what will happen is that inflammation. So that caries, it has caused inflammation of the pulp. But in that case, it was early. So now it can reverse back to its normal condition. So that was your reversible pulpitis. Now over here, it is irreversible pulpitis. Now, as the name says irreversible, that means now the inflammation, it has increased so much into the pulp that you cannot reverse it back to the normal pulp. So that is nothing but irreversible pulpitis. So the definition of irreversible pulpitis is, so I have break this down into some like various point. This is a whole definition. So the first part will be, it is a persistent inflammatory condition of the pulp. So persistence is it is like occurring from a very long time. So because of that, that inflammation of the pulp is from a very long time. So that becomes your first part. Now the next will be, it can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. So in this case, it can be acute or chronic. When it is irreversible pulpitis, so if it is a very long term pulpitis, so that will become sometimes asymptomatic. That means the patient, they won't come with any symptoms. It is chronic, but obviously they will have the inflammation, which is, like deep inside the pulp. So that is the second part that is it may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. The third part is the pulp is becoming incapable of healing. So because of that only it is irreversible pulpitis because now you cannot reverse it back to the normal pulp and your pulp it is incapable of healing and you need to remove that pulp out by the help of root canal treatment. And it is caused by the noxious stimuli. So any stimuli which is causing this is nothing but your noxious stimuli that can be caries, bacteria, whatever it is. So that is nothing but your noxious stimuli. So this is the definition for your irreversible pulpitis. So now what is the etiology behind irreversible pulpitis? So the most common is the bacterial involvement that is nothing but the caries. The second involvement can be because of some mechanical injury, because of some chemical or thermal injury to the pulp and because of that pulpitis it occurs. And the third is when your reversible pulpitis, it is left untreated. So the person is having early occlusal caries, for example, and the person is not getting it treated at that time. So it will turn into moderate and then it will deteriorate itself into irreversible pulpitis. So basically it's like when you're reversible pulpitis, it turns into irreversible pulpitis because it is left untreated. So these are the various etiological factors for the irreversible pulpitis. Now, what are the symptoms of irreversible pulpitis? So the symptoms, they are divided into two stages. That is early stage and the late stage. So in early stage, the patient, they will come with pain and that pain will be because of sudden temperature changes. So the patient, they'll say that whenever I am eating or whenever I'm drinking something cold or sweet or some acidic foodstuff. So because of that, the pain, like my tooth, it aches. So that can be the symptom of irreversible pulpitis. The next can be the pain, it persists for several minutes to hours. Now in reversible pulpitis, we have seen, so the time span, it was very short, like it was in seconds to minute. So that means it is reversible. But now if the pain is for a longer time span, so that means it is irreversible pulpitis. The third symptom can be, the pain, it often continues even if you're removing the cause. So whatever the cause is causing that pain, like for example, if cold water is causing the pain. So if the patient, they stop drinking cold water, even after that, the patient, they'll say that even after that, I am having pain. So that means the inflammation, it has gone too deep into the pulp. And that is the reason why even after removing the cause, the pain, it continues. The fourth symptom is it may come and go spontaneously. So the patient will say it comes and it goes anytime. So suddenly my tooth, it starts aching. Suddenly it stops. So that is the next symptom, the next type of pain. So in this, the nature of pain will be, it will be sharp. It will try, it will be a type of piercing shooting. And it is generally very severe type of pain that the patient, they cannot tolerate it. 
the next symptom is the pain it may be intermittent or continuous so the pain it may come and it may go so it may stop suddenly it may start suddenly or it is a continuous type of pain now the next symptom in this irreversible pulpitis that you won't see in reversible will be whenever the patient they are changing the position that means if they are sitting and then they lie down so the pain it will increase so the pain it increases why because there is change in the intrapalpal pressure so if there is a change in the intrapalpal pressure so the change of position will increase the pain and the next symptom in your early stage will be so the patient they may refer the pain to the adjacent area so if the upper tooth is involved so they will say that i am having pain at the sinus region or i am having headache and if the lower teeth are involved so the patient they'll say even i am having ear ache so these are like the various symptoms in your early stage now the symptoms in the lower stage will be now in this again the pain it becomes more severe and it becomes like a throbbing type of pain it is like a very severe like unbearable type of pain then the next like the most important symptom in your irreversible pulpitis is nocturnal pain so if the patient is saying i am sleeping and suddenly my pain it starts at the night time when i am sleeping and because of that i cannot sleep because i wake up suddenly because of that pain so that means it is irreversible pulpitis so this type of pain it won't happen in reversible pulpitis if it is a night pain that the patient they cannot tolerate it and they suddenly wake up so that means it is irreversible pulpitis and then the next uh, symptom is the pain it is increased by heat and sometime it is relieved by cold although continuous application of cold it may like increase the pain sometimes you will see that in this irreversible condition so the pain it increases by heat and it gets relieved by cold but in this also if the cold application is for a longer time so it will increase that pain and the next like symptom in your late stage will be a pical periodontitis is absent except in the later stage when the infection it extends into the pdl that is a periodontal ligament so in this a pical periodontitis so the inflammation at your periapex is absent but if the like this symptoms they are for a very longer time so that it will turn into a pical periodontitis also where the infection or the inflammation it has reached the periapex so these are the various symptoms of irreversible pulpitis so now how are you going to diagnose the case of irreversible pulpitis so the most common diagnostic method will be your visual examination and the history which is given by the patient so in visual examination you will see there is a deep cavity which is involving the pulp or there are some secondary caries under the restoration and the most common is the symptoms which are given by the patient the next diagnostic method will be the radiographic finding so you'll take the radiograph and you'll see the extent and the depth of the caries involvement and you'll see there's the pulp which is involved in the radiographic diagnosis the next is sometimes you'll see there is like the widening of pdl in the later stage of the irreversible pulpitis that is nothing but your apical periodontitis the next diagnostic method is percussion so in this the tooth it is like positive on percussion the next are the vitality test like you are doing the thermal test so we have seen in the symptoms so the pain it increases when you are applying heat and it relieves when you are applying cold so that is nothing but the thermal test and one more diagnostic method is by using electric pulp tester so it will give like the diagnosis for your irreversible pulpitis so in this also you will see that whenever it is a early stage irreversible pulpitis so in that case the current will be less but now as the time it goes so the tissue it becomes necrotic so in that case current which is applied will be required at a higher like level so that is about the electric pulp test which is a diagnostic method in your irreversible pulpitis now how are you going to treat so the treatment basic treatment for irreversible pulpitis is complete removal of the pulp that is nothing but your pulpectomy or your root canal treatment in which you are completely removing the pulp now if you will see that the tooth it is grossly destructed so in that case you cannot go for root canal treatment so what you will do is you will remove that tooth so this is next treatment modality that is the surgical removal of the tooth if it is not restorable and one more is placement of the intracanal medicament so now as there is this inflammation which has like involved the pulp 
and it was present like from a very long time so you can apply or you can place some intracanal medicament if there's the periapical involvement so in this case you can like place a intracanal medicament so these are the various treatment modalities so the basic treatment modality is pulpectomy or the root canal treatment so this is the difference between the reversible and the irreversible pulpitis so we have discussed about the reversible in the last part of the series and today we have discussed about this irreversible pulpitis so about this table i'm also going to like post it on instagram page so you can like save it and write if you get a question on it so you can write the differences between reversible and irreversible pulpitis so that was all about irreversible pulpitis i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much